All right, so we got our bike ready to go in our trainer. Uh, this is a standard bicycle with a standard quick release. This is the quick release that's provided with the Saris kit here for the Fluid 2. So the first thing I'm gonna do is undo the quick release on the rear wheel uh, from our existing bike so I can put this one in. So leaning over, opening up the quick release, holding the nut on the other side and spinning it off. Slide it out, put it back together so when you're wanting to put that back on your bike, you don't have any missing parts. The existing one is the same concept. The reason we're using it is because it's made of steel on both ends and it's got a rounded end so it fits nicely into the trainer. I'm gonna open up the nut on one side. These little springs are important. They're like a little Christmas tree. So both ends of the Christmas tree point inwards towards the hub shell. So I'm gonna take that one off. I've got my one spring already set pointing inwards. I'm gonna slide that through my rear end. I'm gonna put my little Christmas tree on and I'm going to start threading my nut on the other side, like so. I'm actually putting pressure down with my chest against the floor so that the dropouts and the wheel sit properly as I'm doing this. And when I get close and snug on this side, I'm gonna use the quick release cam on the other side to close this up. Now to get the quick release, the proper tension, you generally want it to start getting tight at about the halfway mark here. And then using the inside of your palm, in this case, that's probably a bit too tight to secure it. Lever facing up is okay or facing back. Generally, you just don't want the lever facing down or somewhere that it can get pulled and open for some reason. Okay, so now that we've got our proper trainer skewer in the bike. I'm gonna set it in here and see if it works. So I got the one end in the non-drive side. This end is getting ready and I pull the cam from the trainer. It is spring loaded on the Saris 2. So it's locked in. So now the bike is in and it's secure. I'm going to bring the resistance unit forward and I'm gonna spin this cam the Saris provides a kind of a torque built in, so this will click when I get to the proper tension, right, like that. So now I've got the proper tension on the wheel and pretty much ready to ride. I'm gonna put the, the block under the front wheel so that it's level um, because these units don't come with a block. You need to figure out a way to get your rear wheel about two inches off the ground, or front wheel, sorry, two inches off the ground, and you're ready to ride. If for some reason the rear tire is slipping, first of all, check your tire pressure. So back off the tension and get a pump on there. Uh, make sure that your tire is inflated to pretty much close to its max pressure. Um, on a hybrid bike like this, it'll probably run about 70 or 80 PSI, just to make sure that it's running nice and smooth. And if it's slipping, it's probably also, you don't have enough tension. But if you have this uh, torque meter and you tighten it till it clicks, that should be enough tension. All right, so you've got your new trainer, maybe old trainer, and you got your fancy new through axle bike with a disc brake and a through axle. How can you tell? Because you don't have a quick release in the back. You're gonna need to buy a separate trainer axle. So in this case, I've got the Cyclops uh, trainer axle. This one's like part number 22673. Um, it has a thread pitch of 1.75, which works for a Trek bicycle. There are other thread pitches. In this case, the other side of this has a 1.0. I'm not too sure he uses 1.0. 1 uh, 1.5 is the other one that is quite common. So the other, People reference like coarse thread would be a 1.75, medium thread is usually a 1.5, and fine thread is a 1.0. I know a lot of specialized bikes use the 1.5 thread pitch. Um, maybe some Cervelos. Gonna have to kind of ask the local bike shop on specifically what thread pitch you need for your bicycle. But I do know that Trex, 99% of them use the 1.75. 
So we're gonna put this in the bike here to allow us to put it in the trainer. Cause right now, if you try to put that in the trainer, you're not gonna sit anywhere. It's not, you're gonna step on it. It's gonna fall out of the trainer right away and you're gonna hurt your nice new bike. All right, so you're gonna need a, an Allen key for this. Uh, three ways always good. In this case, I'm using four millimeter fives. Yep, fives will do it. Uh, this axle comes with a series of different spacers. And so you, there might be a little bit of trial and error figuring out which spacers go on which side. We've already kind of figured that out today. So I know that I've got a big stack of spacers on this side, the non-drive, and these spacers go on the other side. I'm gonna start by uh, taking these out. Try not to lose everything on the floor. Holding that. Okay, I'll hold on to that, and then I'm gonna take my axle out. In this case, the Trek has its nice little through axle tool built into it, but a lot of through axles, you'll just need to stick your Allen key in there and turn it off, spin it out. And this is where everything falls apart. Axle out, trainer axle in. Already the wheels kind of slipped, so it's kind of, uh, there we go. Wiggle it around a little bit. Give it a little love tap. There we go, we got it to the other side. I know for a fact it's not lined up on the other side, so I'm just gonna have to kind of shimmy things around until it gets to where I want it to go. Hopefully that's it. Start threading. But no, I'm threading into nothing right now. Oh, that looks better. It's hard to show on the video, but I am kind of looking on the drive side here to see if this other end cap is lining up you can see that now my Allen key is spinning and my axle is spinning in here. And it's starting to come out on the other side. This is actually insecure now. I'll spin it around so you can see a little better. So the axle's snug. I'm not going crazy tight, but I'm, I'm pretty tight there. Bottle cap tightness and the through axle sticking out. I'm gonna add my spacers that I've kind of predestined. You wanna make sure that there's enough spacers so that this washer bottoms out on the spacer and not the actual axle. And I'm gonna thread that nut on, or that bolt on. Use my Allen to just cinch that up. So now those are secure, both sides we can put it in our trainer. Now, one thing we found when we practiced this was that the trainer width overall is quite a bit, if it's set up for a standard quick release, is quite a bit too narrow. So I took my trainer apart by unthreading this unit here And I actually took this axle out and spun it around. So normally we'd set it this way so that the spring would load everything up. Well, in this case, the distance from here to here is quite a bit longer than here to here. So by having a shorter distance, we've got a wider axle capability. So I slid it in backwards, I guess you could say. Honestly, I don't know if this is exactly what you're supposed to do. This is just how we're making it work today. Open it all the way up. I've also set the cam on this side to the widest setting. Down here you can see the little pin that's in there. So we have three settings here. I've set it to the widest. So to do that, you just kind of slide it and maneuver it. There's the medium. In this case, we're going wide. All right, now we shove it in and it's real tight. It's gonna be tight. So again, we get the non-drive side in first. Drive side is gonna be next. Bring our cam across. Make sure they're both kind of lined up in there. And in this case, it's a hell of a good. Ah. She's tight. 
put a resistance unit on, spin, spin this until it clicks. Make it go click. In this case, I don't have enough tire pressure. You can see how it's like crushing the tire. So I probably should have pumped my tires up first because I'm not even gonna get it to click. So go get your pump, pump up your tires and we're done. Okay, so we've gone through how to get this old trainer, well, dumb trainer into a new modern bike. Honestly, a wheel off trainer is a better solution for the modern bikes. Uh, you're not gonna wear your tire out. You don't have to buy an extra $100 axle. Um, you're just gonna have a better experience. So yes, these trainers are very affordable and they work well. Um, everything is really designed these days around the wheel off style trainer. Um, so we can take our wheel off and we're not kind of overcomplicating things. But if you wanna run this setup, that's pretty much the best way to do it. All right, thanks for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time.